Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised journal test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve today is the one that you will find on page number 163. The very top one, number five. Question number five on page 163. It says, it says, which of the following is the class, which of the following is the closest to the average of the nine changes in the value of imports between consecutive years from 2000 to 2009? So we're looking for the average of nine changes from 2000 to 2009. That's what we're looking for. Now listen, before we do this particular problem, let's do a simpler one. Let's do, let's do, let's first do a uh, Simpler example. Let's do a first simpler example. I'm going to give you six readings. There are six observations. Six observations are given. As follows. Two, four, seven, 11, 16, and 22. The question simply is, the question simply is, what is the average? What is the average of the five changes? Which makes sense because there are six observations, we have five changes. For example, if I go from 7 to 11 to 15, but there are three observations, but there are only two changes. A change from 7 to 11. How much is change from 7 to 11? You take the 11 minus 7, not 7 minus 11. You take the final number and subtract from it the initial number, which means 7 changed by 4. 7 changed by 4 became 11. Well, this was a silly example because this also changes by 4. But you get the idea. If there are three observations, we'll have two change, two changes. If we have 10 observations, like we do in this example, we'll have nine changes. In this particular example that I just gave you, there are six observations. Let's find the changes. There are going to be five changes. Let's find the changes, shall we? The changes are as follows. From 2 to 4 is a change of 2. From 4 to 7 is a change of 3. From 7 to 11 is a change of 4. And from 11 to 16 is a change of 5. Oh my god, this is getting spooky. I wonder what the next change is going to be. And from 16 to 22 is going to be 6. And now we have to find the average of these five numbers. And you can do that on your own if you want to, but you don't have to do anything because the numbers are consecutive. The average is going to be the middle number. Here, the average of the five changes. Here. The average of the five changes is four. The question is, here is the, the million dollar question, the question is, is there a quicker way? Is there a quicker way? Because in the method that we just did is, here's what we did, we took, we wrote down every single observation, we took their differences, we had to add them all up, because this here, they happen to be simple, here they happen to be simple, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, they're consecutive, they're simple, therefore we knew right away that the average was 4. But had it been different numbers, then we would have to first write down all the observations, then take their differences, make sure we don't mess it up. Then we have to, we'll have all the differences, then we'll have to add them all up and divide by how many changes we have. And that's how we find the average of the five changes. Is there a quicker way? I don't want to shock you, but the answer is yes. The answer is yes. I need the room, and I need the room big time. So I'm going to continue on the top here. Okay, we're going to continue on the top. The 
answer is yes. This is how we do it. How do you find the average of anything? If you have a whole bunch of numbers, if, if I give you six numbers and if I ask you what is their average, what do you do? Well, you... Well, I was going to say you add them up and divide by number of number, which is what we just did here. The quicker way is this. The average of the five changes... Average of the five changes... Is... Now here's the thing. Watch what happens. Okay, I'm going to show you here. That's exactly what happens. So one more time. If, if, if I give you five numbers and if I ask you what is their average, what would you have to do? You will add them all up. Listen carefully. You will add them all up. 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. There are five of them. And you will divide by 5. 2. 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. And there are, since there are five of them, you will divide by 5. The question is... What does this 2 plus 3 plus 6, uh, 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 in this context mean? What does it mean in this context, in the context of this problem? In the context of this problem, all of these numbers, when you add them up, all of these numbers, when you add them up, what they actually represent is the total change. That's what it is. This is a change from 2 to 4. This is a change from 4 to 7. This 4 is a change from 7 to 11. So if you add up to all the, all the changes, that's your total change. Divide that by the number of changes. So let's do that, shall we? How are we going to find total change? Total change, how do you find total change? It's very simple. Total change is simply the final number minus... The final number minus the initial number. That's your total change. And you divide that by 5 in this case because what in, in this case there's 5 of them. That's it. And it would have saved us a lot of aggravation, a lot of grief, a lot of time. So let's do that, shall we? How do you find total change? Well, we just talked about it. In order to find the total change, you ask yourself, well, where did I end up at the end? This is our final observation. And you ask yourself, well, where did I begin my journey? At 2. So, the total change in this case, the total change in this case, in this case, is the final point, which is 22 minus the initial, which is 2. This is our total change, which is 20. That's our total change. And how many changes did we have? So you divide the total by the number of numbers we have. So the average change, therefore, average change would be 20 minus 5. Voila, because we had 5 changes, we get an average of 4. Exactly what we found before. We get the, we find out that the average of all the changes is 4, just like we found before right here, just like we found before right here. And that's what we're going to do here, because there are 10 observations. If you were to sit in the exam and do every one of them individually, one by one by one, it will be aggravating, it will be annoying, it will be time consuming, it will be laborious, it will be tedious. Do you understand? Let's do that now. So that's it. We're done with this example. I need the room. So we could erase, erase everything. That's it. We're done with this thing. So you take your final observation. You subtract the initial observation. And that represents the total change. Once you have the total change, you ask yourself how many changes were there. There were five changes in this case. You divide by five and you get your average change. That's it. I know I'm being repetitive when I tell you this thing that I go at a very leisurely pace in these videos because I like it that way. The purpose is I explained to you on the first day. It's not for me to stand here and uh, solve problems after problems. If that's what you wanted, if, if all you wanted was to watch some nerd, some freak, some geek 
on the blackboard solving problems after problems, there are plenty of videos like that. I'm, we are here to learn. We're not here to watch somebody solve problem. I want you to learn. This is for teaching purposes. Don't ask me why I do that. I don't know why I do it. Apparently I get something out of it. All right, let's, 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 let's do what we have to do here. So now here, now we do the problem. Now we do the problems. The, not the problems rather. Now we do the problem. Now we do the problem at hand. So we're going to do the same thing. We have to find the changes. So here's, this, here's what I'm going to use for symbol. This is the import, I for import, subscript 0 means imports in 2000, and in 2000. I with, I with subscript 1 would mean import in 2001 and so on and so forth. I2 means import in 2002 and so on and so forth until we get to I9 which will be the imports in 2009. So those are the symbols that I'm using, okay? So the first change that we want to find, the first change for the first year, the change for the first year that we want to find is the, change, the uh, observation that we have for the 2001, imports in 2001, and we take away the imports of 2000. That's the first change. We're going to have nine of them. The second one, we take the imports of 2002, and we take away the imports of 2001. The difference of imports in 2002 minus the imports in 2001 tells us how much the import changed from 2001 to 2002. Okay, we can keep on going. Then we have the next one, we take the imports of 2003, we subtract from it the imports of 2002, and so on and so forth. Until we get to the last year, where we'll, where we'll take the imports of 2009, and we'll subtract from it the imports of 2008. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. We are very close to getting done. What happens is that what happens is that I see a negative i here, negative i1, the imports of 2001, and here we see a positive i1 that drops out. Now let's use a different color because, as I explained to you before many times, we do have the flare for the dramatic, so we're going to use a different color now. So now we have i2, positive i2 right here, and here we have a negative i2. So this one, this guy, is going to kill this guy. And similarly, this is positive I3, and next here, if we were to continue here, there would have been a negative I3. This is going to drop out. Finally, this I8, negative 1, over here in the, in the front, is going to be positive I8, and it's going to drop out. If this I8 is going to be dropped out by positive I8 later on. Let's do it in a different way completely. And what we are left with is the final observation, which is the I9, which is the final observation. minus, minus, because it's a negative here, minus the I0, which is the initial observation. Voila, which is what, which is what we've been talking about all along. Voila, that's it. And that final observation minus the initial observation is your total change. You see what happens? That's your total change right here, total change. Now all you have to do is divide it by the number of changes and we have nine changes and how do we know we have nine changes? Because there are ten years. If there are ten years, we are looking at nine changes. So let's first find the total change, shall we? And for that you have to look at the graph, okay? Then I cannot do it for you. I9, which is the imports in 2009, do it with me. Imports, imports in 2009, look at the graph and tell me what the imports were for 2009 looks to me like a, I cannot tell whether it's an 8 or a 9. It's a 9 billion. So this, this final observation, the imports in 2009, is 9 billion. Minus, what is the initial observation? Which is the 2000, and in 2000 the imports are little over 2. Sorry, little over 3. You see, I almost made a mistake. It's little over 3. 
the, the line is between two and between two and four, and that is, is little over that line, so it's little over three. So I'm gonna write that as three plus. Okay, keep listening. So something that is nine, nine minus something more than three, that's how you read it. Nine minus something more than three is going to be little under six. It's going to be little under six. That's our total change. Therefore, therefore, the average change over the nine years, therefore, the average change, average change over the I, th I shouldn't say average change over the nine years, average change over the ten years, but we have nine changes. Therefore, the average change equals the total change, which is little under six. Total change over the number of changes. Total change is little under six. Number of changes we have is nine. So something less than 6 over 9 is going to give you something little under 2 thirds. Something little under 2 thirds. I hope you can read that far. And I'm going to continue this part here. Let's do it this way. And we know that uh, 2 thirds, little under 2 thirds of a billion dollar is going to be approximately a billion dollar is a thousand million. A thousand million and two thirds of a thousand million is going to be approximately 660, 660 million dollars. 660 million dollars. So as you can see, we just took the difference between the final and the, and the initial. We did not actually, we did not actually take all the changes individually and add them all up and divide by nine. That would be too much work. So that's it, approximately $660 million, whatever, whatever the hell that comes closest to is, that's the answer. 640 is what I see there, that comes closest to it, the answer is E. The answer is E. That's it, we're done. It took a while, but that's okay. It took a while, but that's okay. Hopefully if you see something like this in the exam, you'll remember this exercise. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.